Not so fast. We were about to post this video breaking down all the Texans free agency grades and breaking down the signing of Derek Barnett. But the Texans, they went ahead and made another move, re-signing wide receiver and punt returner Steven Sims. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a C-plus grade on the re-signing. Just initial thoughts. I mean, it, this literally just happened a couple seconds ago. I... I like the move. I like Sims as a possible punt returner because I don't want to see Tank Dell back there. Even though I know he's electric, I would hate to see Tank Dell get injured on a special teams play. So I get the idea of bringing in Steven Sims in that aspect. But now it really begs the question, who's the odd man out? Because I think the Texans are going to add another big name wide receiver, either in free agency via trade or in the draft. So where does that leave Steven Sims? Could he be a guy who, you know, back into the roster guy is fighting for one of those last spots against Xavier Hutchinson, John Mechie? I mean, I don't know where he fits in, but I'm going to go ahead and give this one a C plus grade. And let's get on to the rest of our free agency grades. Welcome into Texans today. I'm your host, Jeremy Chuggs. And coming up on today's program, I'm going to be breaking down every single signing the Texans have made so far this offseason, and I'm going to give it a grade, A, B, C, D, or F. But, hey, perfect timing. Right as we were getting ready to film, the Texans made another move. They re-signed edge Derek Barnett. Now, they picked him, off of, uh, picked him up off of waivers in the middle of last season from the Philadelphia Eagles. Had a pretty good uh, year with the Houston Texans. To finish out the season I'm gonna give this a free agency grade of a B plus I like the signing the numbers have not come out on the contract details uh, to my knowledge but I do like the signing by the Houston Texans I mean bringing back another edge rusher they absolutely needed to help with that defensive line it's a one-year deal for Derek Barnett so we'll be breaking out every single signing plus Derek Barnett moving forward in today's program but before we get started, hey, who has some belief? Say it with your chest. Who believes in this team moving forward? If you do, go down and hit that like button if you think the Texans can win the AFC South in 2024. Yes, the Jaguars are retooling. So are the Indianapolis Colts. We don't know what Anthony Richardson's really going to be. And then we have the Tennessee Titans in there cluster you know what that they have going on over there in Tennessee. I think the Texans should be the favorites going into this season. And I do believe that God willing, you know, everybody stays healthy, knock on wood. Everybody knock on wood if you're with me. Um, I do think the Texans can win the AFC South this year. So if you agree with me, if you believe in this team, go down and hit that like button and let's get started with today's program, grading every single signing. First one from Foley Futakasi, defensive tackle, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I really like the signing of Foley Futakasi. The numbers they're not going to jump off the page for Foley. I mean, he had a okay year last year, 24 tackles, three tackles for loss, no sack, three quarterback hits, but he's a big guy who eats up blocks on the interior. 6'4", almost 320 pounds. He's a guy who's really going to help this Texans run defense out if he's able to, you know, be there, eat up blocks, and let the linebackers, Christian Harris, Aziz Alshire, cut through those gaps. I like the signing of Foley. Foley Futakasi, I'm going to give it a B minus. Next up, and by the way, also, I'm going to go through all the signings, and at the very end, I'm going to go through the re-signings that the Texans had. So the next si exterior signing the Texans had in free agency was actually a guy that they ended, they drafted just a couple years back in Lonnie Johnson, safety corner hybrid. They gave him a one-year, $1.3 million deal. I'm going to give this one a C. You know, I don't really love Lonnie Johnson's game. It's only a one-year deal, so not a lot there. But at the same time, I don't know where he really fits. Is he a special teams guy? Is he somebody that the Texans are looking to add to that defensive back room? I don't think so, but I really do think the signing is mid. I'm going to give it a C. The next signing that they had was Jeff Okuda signing a one-year $4.5 million deal. Former Top five pick in the NFL draft. Played with the Falcons last year. I'm going to give this one a B minus. Yes, he's still young. He still has a lot of potential. But he actually got ended up getting benched in Atlanta last year. Had a lot of peaks and valleys throughout last season for the Atlanta Falcons. Jeff Okuda, he's a guy who 
I see D'Amico Ryans as a defensive-minded coach, and he sees a guy with all the talent in the world, but just not the technique, hasn't been able to put it all together. And I think D'Amico Ryans sees him kind of like, you know, a girl sees some guy who's maybe not as desirable, and she's like, you know what, I can fix him. I could be the one to get Jeff Okuda on the right track. That's why I'm giving it a B minus, a little bit higher than other people have this signing of Jeff Okuda. I do worry that the Texans are just going to be like, oh yeah, Jeff Okuda, he's our guy opposite of Derek Stingley. I still think they need to sign somebody or spend some draft capital at the cornerback position, but I'm going to give it a B minus for now, thinking that Jeff Okuda is going to be a guy to at least just, you know, buy for a starting position. I hope they don't just give it to him. But if he's there in the mix and he earns that spot, then I think the signing is decent. Now, I mentioned the Texans. I think they should still go out and draft a corner in the draft. Their first pick in the draft is at 42 in round two. Do you think the Texans, with that pick, should go after a cornerback? A lot of good corner talent in the draft this year. What do you think? Give me a yes. Give me a no. Do the Texans need to draft a cornerback with their first selection in the 2024 NFL draft? Now, if they draft a cornerback, if they draft somebody else, you already know we'll have you covered. The best Texans draft and free agency coverage on YouTube is right here at Texans Today. So go hit that subscribe button right now for daily Texans news and rumors videos. 100% free all year long. Go down and hit that sub button. We are the fastest growing Texans channel on YouTube just past 12,000 subscribers looking forward to 13,000 subscribers thank you to everybody who's already subbed so far let's keep this train going and make this the number one Texans channel on YouTube next up next signing is going to be Danico Autry signing a two-year 20 million dollar deal and this one at first I was like lukewarm I was like a oh, decent signing then I kind of watched more of Danico Autry's you know film from last season and I'm going to give this one an A-. I mean, he's a little bit on the older side, but coming off his best season to date, 11 and a half sacks, 12 tackles for loss, two forced fumbles from Danico Autry. I think he's a guy who, yes, they lost Sheldon Rankins. They traded away Malik Collins, but I think adding him and Futakasi in the middle is at least a good start to rebuild this interior defensive line who got shredded against the Baltimore Ravens last year in the playoffs i really think it, they saw that game and they're like you know what we need to fix this interior run defense and they did that with a guy like autry and a guy like Fatakasi. next up mike ford special teams special players check check tuesday that's what mike ford is two year 4.5 million dollar deal just a special teams guy hasn't really found the, his way onto the field a ton in, in his nfl career but is a decent tackler, is a good guy to have as a special teams guy. So I'm going to give this one a C plus. I mean, not nothing exciting. I don't hate the signing. It doesn't, you know, get me jazzed up about the Texans next season either. So I'm going to give it a C plus for Mike Ford. 28 tackles, one interception, two pass breakups last year. Can be a guy who you can throw in the secondary here and there when needed. But he isn't a guy that you're going to rely on to start games for you this season. Next up. One of the best early signings by the Texans. They got Danico Autry. Then they went and got his teammate Aziz Al Shire on a three-year, $34 million deal. And this was a must because Blake Cashman signed with the Minnesota Vikings, the lead, one of the leading tacklers for the Texans this past season left. So they brought in the leading tackler for the Titans in Aziz Al Shire. Give me a B plus on this signing. I like the signing. A little bit hefty price tag for Al Shire. Also, based on what Blake Cashman got going to the Minnesota Vikings, I thought not a immense overpay, but I thought it was a little bit of an overpay getting Aziz Al Shire. But he did have 163 tackles last season and is very familiar with the D'Amico Ryan, uh, Ryan's defensive scheme going back to his time with the San Francisco 49ers. So there's that continuity there. I like the signing. I like bringing in a guy who uh, D'Amico Ryan's is already familiar with. Give me a B plus for the signing of Aziz Al Shire. Next up was Tommy Townsend, a two-year, six million dollar deal, and they needed to sign a punter because Cameron Johnston left for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this is another one, maybe not the most flashiest player, the most flashiest signing, but give me a B plus. He's a good punter, and something that you need to watch out for during Texans game this year, uh, Texans games this year with Tommy Townsend is he was actually a part of quite a bit of trickery with the Kansas City Chiefs. 
has a little bit of an arm on him, is able to, you know, implement some trick plays in the punting game in the special teams department, which we already know the Texans, their special teams unit, really good last season. You add Tommy Townsend, I give this one a B+. Plus. Next guy up, linebacker, a depth guy, Del Sean Phillips, another special team, special players. Del Sean Phillips, one year, $2.6 million deal. I give this one a C because, yes, he's a depth piece. Yes, he's a guy who can be a special teams player for you, but he wasn't like an amazing special teams player for the Baltimore Ravens. Just another guy, just a jag in my opinion. That's why I'm going to give this one a C. Could grow into it, maybe a little bit of a better linebacker in my opinion, but Del Sean Phillips He's not going to move the needle for you if you're the Houston Texans. 24 tackles last year, zero sacks, one tackle for loss, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery for Delshawn Phillips. He's a guy who I still think the Texans need to add to that linebacker room. Like I said, they lost Blake Cashman. They also lost Denzel Perryman to the LA Chargers. So you need to add another guy, another linebacker for the Houston Texans in Delshawn Phillips. I'm going to give this one a C grade. Next signing on the list is going to be Tim Settle, two-year, $7 million deal. And there are some people that were a little bit hype about this signing for the Houston Texans. For me, not so much. I'm going to give it a C-plus grade. Tim Settle, a guy who, throughout his time in the NFL, has not been able to find his way on the field. He started out with the Washington Commanders, but didn't get a lot of run because he was sitting behind guys like Deron Payne, guys like Jonathan Allen. And really, even last year with the Buffalo Bills, you thought, oh, maybe he's going to get some more run. Maybe he'll get some more playing time. Not really. So Tim Settle, a guy who unproven, not hasn't had a lot of you know tape in the National Football League. So I'm gonna give this one a C plus for the Houston Texans. Just another band aid at the defensive tackle position, in my opinion. Next signing, a big one. They actually traded for Joe Mixon first, and then they signed him to a three-year, $27 million extension for the running back from the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm gonna give this one an A minus because. I was going to give this one a B, but then I I thought, you know what? I'm going to bump it up to an A- minus because they could have massively overpaid for Saquon Barkley, which Saquon, I think he's going to have a good year. He's a really good running back. But at the same time, if you can get a guy like Joe Mixon who's fractionally you know, worse than Saquon Barkley, he's still a really good running back and pay him significantly less. I would rather have that than them going and breaking the bank for a running back in the year 2024. I don't think that's a smart move by the Philadelphia Eagles to sign Saquon Barkley to such a high contract, especially when they're paying guys like A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts. I think the Texans, they did the right thing. They had a limit with Saquon Barkley, and they said, hey, you know what, we'll get somebody else. They went to plan B, which was Joe Mixon, and I thought it's a pretty decent plan B. He's had a really good career in the National Football League. Last season, 257 carries, over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns every single year. He seems to be able to find to pay dirt. He seems to be able to get touchdowns on touchdowns. So for Joe Mixon, I'm giving this one an A minus grade. Next up, maybe the biggest signing of free agency so far for the Houston Texans. They went out and got superstar edge rusher Daniil Hunter on a two-year $49 million deal, $48 million guaranteed. Give this signing an A plus for me, baby. I absolutely love the signing of Daniil Hunter. Yes, you lost Jonathan Grenard to the Minnesota Vikings, but I think at the end of the day, you upgraded. You got a guy who in Daniil Hunter, you know what he is. You know that he's going to be able to produce 16 and a half sacks this past season, 23 tackles for loss. JJ Waterproofs, I approve as well. You get a guy, maybe he's not going to have the longevity of a Jonathan Grenard, who's an ascending player in the National Football League, but you don't know that Grenard's going to be able to mirror what he did last season. That was a career year for him. Dan, uh, uh, Daniil Hunter, he's been able to prove it time and time again that he is an elite pass rusher in the National Football League. So you're adding a guy like Daniil Hunter, also a veteran who can come in, maybe teach Will Anderson some tricks of the trade. I love this signing by the Houston Texans. 6'5", 263-pound Daniil Hunter. I mean, this was a home run signing by Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans. Absolutely loved what they did with this. I was a little worried when they let Blake Cashman and Jonathan Grenard walk out of the door, but with the signing of Daniil Hunter, I really, really like this move. Give me an A plus for this signing. Next up on my list, David Sharp, offensive tackle, swing tackle. They signed him to a two-year 
million dollar deal. For this one, give me a C plus. I mean, it, it's an okay signing. They needed to sign somebody else, but I just don't get you. You traded for Josh Jones last year, had a decent year for you, and you decided to bring in a guy like David Sharp instead. I mean, okay, he's 6'6", 330 pounds, has had a decent career as a backup in the National Football League. He's not a needle mover, so give me a C plus for his grade. But, I mean, I, I wish they would have signed a guy like Josh Jones back. I really, I really like what he brought to the Texans team, the positional versatility as well, that he could play guard and tackle. David Sharp, give me a C plus for that signing. Next signing on the list for me is Mario Edwards, who just signed the other day to a one year deal this one meh it's okay i give it a c grade just another body that you're going to have there in training camp in the preseason you know you don't know what you have in some of your younger pass rushers your your younger you know edge guys you just re-signed Derek barnett but then you don't know dylan horton great story but is he going to be able to come back this season from stage four hodgkin's lymphoma i don't know what his path to recovery is and how he's going to be able to get back on the field next season. I think Mario Edwards is more of a safety valve guy, more of a guy who just in case you need another body at the defensive end spot, you sign him Mario Edwards to a one year deal. Now here are all the re signings and the grades that I gave them for the Houston Texans. Dalton Schultz. I gave an a Kaimi Fairbairn an a as well. Two guys who Dalton Schultz best tight end in free agency this season offseason and you sign him to a team friendly friendly deal absolutely love that Kaimi Fairbairn coming off a career year we know how important kickers can be especially once you get into the playoffs I gave that one an A Desmond King a sneaky re-signing Texans brought him back mid-season last year and he played phenomenal he's gonna be your starting guy in the slot this season I gave that one an A Khalil Davis I liked what he did last year at the defensive tackle spot give me a B for that Eric Murray, I gave that one a B minus, another guy in that safety room. And then Charlie Heck, another swing tackle, B minus. I actually like Charlie Heck over David Sharp as the Texans swing tackle if needed. Chris Boyd, I gave a C plus. And then Noah Brown, I also gave a C plus. And overall for the Texans this offseason, I'm going to give them a B plus grade in free agency. They made some improvements, but still have some major questions on the defensive side. Who's going to be their starting cornerback? Are the defensive tackles they brought in in Foley, Fadakasi, Danico Autry enough to revitalize the interior of that defensive line? Who's going to be another linebacker that starts? Do they really trust in Henry To'o To'o or... Are they going to go out and draft another linebacker in the 2024 NFL draft? Still some question marks at a couple positions, so I can't give it an A, but a B-plus for me. I really liked the signing of Daniil Hunter and Joe Mixon, obviously. Danico Autry was one of my sneakier signings by the Texans that I really absolutely loved. Now, those are all the grades that I gave the Texans free agency signings. Feel free to go down. Let me know. Do you agree with my grades? Do you disagree? What would you give the Texans in free agency so far? And like I said earlier, don't forget to hit that sub button. We are the fastest growing Texans channel on YouTube. So if you want daily Texans news and rumors content, go down and hit that sub button.